Hey guys, uh, thanks for checking this video out. Um, if you like what you see, uh, subscribe, hit the like button, and click the uh, little bell notification to be notified uh, whenever I uh, post videos like this. Um, so what I'm going to go over real quick is um, using Live Professor, the templates and some audio patching details of that, as well as using a Reaper to record your house mix and using a template to set that up as well. Um, so where we're using this is, uh, <coughs> is uh, one of our campuses at the church. And this is all running on one machine using a Soundcraft SI Expression Console using the USB expansion card. Uh, so we're able to record the house mix and do uh, pitch correction and some dynamic EQ using plugins in Live Professor all on the same machine. Um, also, uh, we're also triggering uh, snapshots in Live Professor with the scenes in the Soundcraft console. Um, I have another video that goes over some of the, the snapshots stuff, so we're not really going to go over that, but basically just um, using templates, creating templates to make it really, really easy for your volunteers uh, to implement this stuff. And so you, you as the, if you're the tech director or um, production director, you're not getting phone calls and text messages. And so it, it's a really easy way to kind of streamline your setup and save time. Um, do the work once and then not have to keep repeating it every time you do a show or a service or whatever. <clears throat> so uh, basically we have Live Professor opened here and behind it is Reaper. So we'll start in Live Professor. Um, it's a, so basically a template is a, a, a preset that, or like a start here uh, scene for your software, right? So you can set everything up the way you want it and then just start at that point every time and build off from that. Uh, so in Live Professor, if you go to Project, and you can click on New Project, and what that does is it pulls up your templates. So you can start with an Empley template, or you can start with what we have here as SCWC2020. So basically, South Creek is the name of the campus. WC stands for Worship Center, and then we created it in 2020. So we can go ahead and hit New Project, and it now builds out <coughs> uh, our template that we start with for our services. So basically, it's set up to accommodate four vocals, pitch, pitch correction for the four vocals, F6, which is a dynamic EQ for the four vocals, and then uh, analyzing software. So you can see the different, your frequency spectrum for all four uh, vocal channels. The patching is set up for each one of these. So if you look over here, you'll see in three, out three, uh, and then vocal four should be set to that. So it kind of made me a liar. But, um, you get the concept. So vocal one, two, three, and four, like that. Um, so uh, basically, it just saves you that whole step, right? Um, so something to be aware of, though, is when you do this, any changes you make will not get saved. Because if you look right here, it says no project. So the first thing that your op needs to do is go to project and go to save project. And then for us, we have a folder on the desktop that uh, just usually say by the date. So for us, we'll just go test and save it. Uh, yeah, sure. Apparently somebody already was in here and did a test uh, version of this. So we'll just save over that. <clears throat> so now we have tests. So now these settings will be stored and you can go through and make your changes, set your keys, you know, for each one of these, however you want to, you know, do that kind of stuff. You can build your snapshots. And however you want to do it, assign your MIDI stuff and all that. Um, and that is fully functioning and you're off to the races. You don't have to go through and open, create your, um, your signal flows and then add your plugins every single time. This is already preset, ready to go. So it saves a ton of time, okay? So then we can jump to Reaper. It's a similar idea. File, go to uh, project templates. House Mix Recording Template is what I've named it. Open it up, and I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on how to use Reaper. There's a zillion videos on YouTube on how to build this, how to operate it, rather. Um, but basically, this template has one track, and it's pre-patched, so if we right-click, mono, and that's input 32. So what I've done, ahead of time is I've patched in the audio console that output 32 on the USB card is the house mix. So basically all you have to do is hit arm. This is already set 
and all you have to do is save it. You should always save it first, just like in Live Professor. You want to go ahead and save it and, and save it to wherever you want to save it to and then hit record. And that's it. It's literally that fast. You're up and ready, ready to go. And both of these are operational. So it literally could take you 30 seconds and you could open these up and be off to the races. <clears throat> um, you know, with Reaper, any digital audio recording workstation, um, you want to make sure where you're saving it to should be an external drive or uh, at least an SSD drive with enough space uh, on the hard drive that you're not going to fill it up in the middle of your, your, your recording. Um, for us, we use Dropbox, so we're recording to Dropbox and then it syncs in real time. So then it can be accessed from other campuses or other locations or other computers. Um, that's a workflow choice that we made. You certainly don't have to do that. You could just have an external drive, hard drive. Um, is probably the preferred method for that. But anyway, um, so it's just something to take note of that both of these pieces of software are utilizing the same USB device. Um, Live Professor, if we go to Options, Audio MIDI Net Options, you'll see Soundcraft MIDI USB Combo, input and output. And it's we're utilizing input one through four and output one through four. And that's patched in the audio console to send and receive the inserts on the console from the USB expansion card one through four. And then in Reaper, that, if we go to preferences, and then audio device, you'll see Soundcraft MADI USB combo. It's the same thing. They're, they're both able to share the USB device. And this one, like I said before, is patched to input 32, because on the console, the um, left-right signal is patched to output 32 on the um, on the the house mix. It's set to the USB card output 32. Now there's some details with the USB expansion card on the Soundcraft um, that I'll probably go into another video with a, a little more detail on um, because that card is actually a 64 input and 64 output card it's sharing those 64 inputs and outputs between the USB port and the MADI port, which I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but basically it serves two roles. So you just have to keep your patching clear and concise so it makes sense. So basically the way we're using it, 32 channels in and out go to the USB, and then 32 channels in and out go to the MADI uh, port, which goes to our stage box. Um, but as far as on the computer is concerned, the computer just sees 32 inputs and outputs. So between your software, you just need to understand, hey, uh, Live Professor is using inputs one through whatever, and then Reaper is using inputs and outputs one through whatever. So you, could, you can totally multi-track record this if you wanted to. I, we haven't really had the need to do that at this campus, so we haven't really bothered with it. Um, but you, can, you could multi-track record everything here. And just as long as you have your direct outs patched in your console, so say you were using Live Professor inputs one through four, and then you could set, uh, you know, inputs, whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter. You just set it to whatever you want it to be. So you could do 10 through 30, and then those are all your direct outs coming out of the console, and then set 10 through 30 inputs armed in Reaper, and it'll record your direct out signals out of the Soundcraft into Reaper that way. And so you'll get them all separated. And then you could even patch them back out. So then 10 through 30, when you play Reaper, it'll play all of these channels separated, or tracks rather, separated back into the Soundcraft. And it would just be a matter of repatching your inputs, uh, your, your input source on the console. And then you could do what's called a virtual sound check, which is great for if there's something that you just can't seem to get sounding right, or a training tool to work with other volunteers to train them how to mix, or if you just want to mess around and try some stuff. And the cool thing is, um, because it's playing back, it should, um, all your signals will still run through Reaper, or I'm sorry, run through Live Professor. So say your lead vocal, okay, so say vocal one. If you just repatch your input source on your console to be your vocal one track in Reaper, then when you play Reaper back, it will also play back through your plugins. So you can, 
essentially literally do a virtual sound check. So it's as if your singer, your vocal one singer was in the room singing, and then you can fine tune your EQ or dynamics or whatever you want to do. So it's a really powerful tool. Um, and this stuff doesn't really cost much. Um, I believe the license for Live Professor is $60 or $70. I think Reaper is about the same, something like that. Um, so there's a very good chance you have a computer that can do this. And if you have a digital console, we're using the Soundcraft SI Expression. Um, but you could do it with quite literally any other digital console. It's just a matter of figuring out the caveats of patching and all of that, just learning how to use the equipment you have. Um, and so it's a really powerful tool. Um, so yeah, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, um, please shoot them down in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Uh, so when I post videos, uh, you'll get notifications of it. Um, so yeah, if there's anything that you would like to see, please hit a, throw a comment down there. Um, if you have any questions, if you don't think this is the best way to do it, if there's a better way to do it, by all means, I want to learn how to do this better. So throw it in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.